a bantamweight main event and you know we love the bantamweight division here and do you know what we love on this podcast and particularly tom we love ricky simone's back so you know it's great to see that back in our lives for five rounds as well as he faces off against song yadong and i think this is tremendous matchmaking like i actually think this is really good matchmaking perfect sort of ranking wise Outside the top five, inside edge of top ten, you know. So we're talking about rank eight, Song Yudong versus rank ten, Ricky Simone. Perfect. 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 Simone coming off the win over Jack Shaw. So good it sent Shaw up to uh, featherweight. And then Song coming off the loss to Corey Sandhagen. Again, no shame in that. This, this lines up really well. It's just a really well lined up match. And Tom... I'm going to ask you this, straight up. Over the last couple of years, who has developed more between these two? Uh, well, I remember Song Yudong entering the UFC, um, obviously out of Uriah Hall's camp down there in, in California. Mm. They they sprawl, they shoot, <laughs> they play that game. Mm. Uh, the, you know, the anti-Dominic Cruz yes. that, that, that never was. Yes. <laughs> Um, well, until, of course, Cody Garbrandt's spectacular win. Yeah. We've uh, heralded that before. And Song came in with a great one too. Fast hands, short short reach, but big power for a bouncing weight. Mm. And, um, and of course, some fundamentals in the wrestling to, to shoot a sprawl, you know, should he be challenged. Mm. What's changed since then, Joe? Um... Not a huge amount, I've got. I've got to say, he he's more. It, is it the interesting thing about Song Yudong is that he's got a, a ten-year fight career and he's twenty-five years old, which is uh, illegal. That's an expletive illegal to quote Dana White. Um, it's it's a weird career, isn't it? Like it's it's a weird one. Like he's kind of come in and he's had this sort of like he's got clearly like dynamite fists dynamite power that can like knock people out and in the case of Corey Sandhagen even rocked Corey Sandhagen slightly you know it sort of caused Sandhagen to pause and go like hold on a second I'm going to go back to skirting on the outside a little bit here and I might sit on those takedowns a bit more you know I might go a bit deeper on those and Song to his credit has developed a little bit but it's it's quite slow progress. Like it's been a while since he's developed that kicking game. You know, he he's always I think I felt for a long time he struggled with like the idea of like the kicks have to be set up with something or they have to set something else up, which that's not always the case. You can literally just blast a kick. You can you can blast a kick to the body. It's not it's not the end of the world. I mean, do you remember the first Dillashaw Garbrandt fight? And do you remember Dwayne Ludwig's um, advice to Dillashaw, which is like, you don't have to set the kicks up all the time. You can just blast them. You can blast one at him. Okay, you don't have to make him think that those that's where the kicks are only coming. And it took Song a while to realise that. And I just felt like he's never progressed on with those kicking game from there. And because, as you say, the reach, the Paolo Costa arms, everything has to be in hook range, which then draws him into a potential problem against someone like Ricky Simone, which is takedowns tom yeah quite so that brings us on to ricky simone's evolution now he's had some hiccups along the way of course most uh, notably that, yes. yeah quite uh relevant for this fight uriah faber the old man getting it done in 2019 he came back for that one fight mm. suddenly thought he still got it with the with the first round knockout of simone just caught him joe yeah just one of those he big, just caught him it was a big overhand right Behind yeah. the ear, down he goes, ground and pound. Yeah, it was one of those. It was now, Fa- Faber bless him took took it as a message that he still belongs. <laughs> uh, Petty Yan, I'm ready for you, son. Yeah, the oldest and, swinger in town, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and boy, I bet he regrets that because yeah. uh, he took a whooping in that fight yeah. and built Yan's legacy a little bit. Um, but Simone's really kicked on since then. Of course, he did uh, succumb to another loss in his next fight against Rob Font. A man that we see kind of in in the in between zone between the top tier, yeah, you know, the the pole position on the grid, and then the outside the top ten guys, uh, not not getting points for finishing. Mm. Uh, 
he's definitely treading that gap. And Simone wasn't able to bridge it himself, uh, losing to Rob Font. Do you remember that fight? Yeah, I remember it mostly of Simone going for takedowns, getting caught up against the fence, Font getting in the underhooks, knees pummeling outside, breaking jab, go from there. Like, that was... Simone's offense wasn't really that great. Big looping strikes that were just... Well, Faber caught me with this, so I'll just copy that. Like, he's Mega Man, and he's taken his ability to and just copied Uriah Faber's. It d- doesn't quite work like that, as we all know. Um, so, yeah, there, there was a bit of a frustration there. But since then, he's gone on a good run. Beating Ray Borg, who naturally a flyweight. Well, naturally, I don't know what weight he is. Um, you know, Gaetano Pirello, and then Brian Kelleher, Rafael Asunso, and then Jack Shaw. The Jack Shaw one is the most impressive one out of that, I would say. You know. Well, certain, certainly given the kind of energy that was behind Shaw going into that fight, talking mm. about him undefeated at the time, and uh, you know people were talking about him reaching the big time. I actually hadn't seen Shaw fight before then, so I was expecting big things. But for me, Simone just shut him down. Uh, we were talking about this fight a little bit before the pod. We seem mm. to have slightly different recollections. For me, uh, Simone walked him down. Yeah, walked he... him down and manhandled him a little bit, Joe. Uh, in the finish, for sure. In the finish, for sure. I thought it was pretty even. Again, as I said to you before, though, it was Shaw trying to do nice, neat footwork, jabbing, one-two, angling off from there. And Simone just wasn't respecting it and just bum just Closing forward. the distance. Yeah, closing Locking the distance. out the sun with that giant <laughs> back, Joe. Smothering him. <laughs> knocking him down and then... Chucking it, him out with an arm triangle. Is it a lunar eclipse or is it just Ricky Simone? Like, that's that's what we have to question here. So, um, you asked yeah. what the evolution in Simone has been. Mm. Uh, he now has a mullet and his back is even bigger, Joe. And that, to me, is all I need. Can I also give you the fight that I think is really quite important with this? Um, Ricky Simone's debut in the UFC was against Marab Devashvili. It went all three rounds, but he won by technical guillotine choke at the end of the third round, where he choked Mirab out. Oh, what lovely times for Tom. Cut, and, cut, well, I, I mean, you're, you're saying words that make my heart sing, Joe. Yeah. We have to point out, though, that it was it was controversial. Yes. Uh, with the stoppage coming after the end of the fight. Yes. Um, you know, so they were all ready to announce that Ashvili is the winner on points with the judges. Javash Vili's... You know, up against sitting on the cage, cheering. He's got the Georgia flag out, yeah. and then they had to pull him down. But actually, no, uh, you lost. Yes, the, the fight was called. He chucked you unconscious after. Uh, worth rewatching because obviously Marab has gone on to be the main man now at bantamweight. Mm. Um, but we'll get more onto that subject later on. Let's also just go with that though. That that was a very scrambly fight where Simone kept up with Marab in the wrestling exchanges. You know he. It's clearly got really quite good cardio. And this going from a three-round fight to a five-round fight really favours him. Like, it really does favour him. And what also might favour him is the success Corey Sandhagen had with takedowns. We're talking about Corey Sandhagen, who's a striker. Now, admittedly, he's a rangy striker, whereas Simone is a more squat individual, shorter, power in the legs sort of thing. Takedowns from there. So maybe the takedown would be more obvious coming from Simone with how he fights. And also history uh, and whatnot but also um what that might then lead to is knees up the middle from song i'm guessing if he is gonna develop something like that there and then uppercuts because again song has got he's such a strong powerful hitter that he can get simone out of there and we have seen simone gotten out of there by uriah faber like you don't think song yudong can do that like he can quite clearly do that against Ricky Simone yeah I I do think he can do that and I think the fact that uh, Simone's approach will lead him into that kind of range consistently could favour Song Song really wants to get some momentum behind him once he's marching forward himself throwing combos and shots he's been tremendously dangerous he has significantly higher uh, knockdown average than Ricky Simone, and, you know, he carries genuine power. So I think it could be quite an explosive matchup for mm. in, a, in, a, in a phone box, Joe. Yeah, for sure. The problem is, is that Song's cardio is not great. Like, even in three-round fights, it falls off. 
in that fight against Sandhagen, that fourth round, it was all Sandhagen and he was saved by the Doctor, rightfully so, in between rounds there. And Simone does have very good cardio. Um, so I think Simone will do the smart thing of trying to weaponize that. Will Simone, though, do the smart thing of elbows? That was something that Sandhagen did really well, which was the elbows off the clinch, clinch breaks, clinch exchange, as Song was coming in, past punching range, into elbow range. Will Simone be able to do that, do you think? Well, I, I will say, you know, it does favour Sandhagen, the, the height differential between him and Song. He was able to come over the top with, the, with those elbows, yeah. especially breaking from clinches. Uh Whereas there's not such an option for Simone. It sounds like what you're saying, Joe, is that um, over time, Simone's going to start to run him over a little bit and that will culminate later later in the fight with a tired tired Simone, uh, tired Simone song Sorry, getting, getting ground out. Uh, I think that's um, a likely outcome. Uh, I just, <laughs> just can't look past Song knocking him out, though. Like, it's hard for me to do that. Because, again, all right, he knocked out Marlon Moraes. That was a diminished Marlon Moraes. But everyone else he's fought, is, if he puts hands on them, they sometimes they get stung, man. Their feet go a bit wobbly. And that goes Sandhagen, who's a tremendous striker, you know, who recovered really well from that, you know, knew how to get away from that. Will Ricky Simone have that striking ability if he gets hit? I don't think so. And... No offense to him. Like I, I think Ricky Simone's a really good fighter, but I don't know. I, I can see that happening. However, Tom, if you do want my prediction, Ricky Simone by oh late finish. I'm going to go with a late finish. Just works song finishes him late in the fight. Sub or TKO fourth or fifth round. Just the cardio just weaponizes that. Calls out Marab. You're taking everything I work for, motherfucker. And uh, we get the rematch that really none of us expected uh, in Ricky Samo versus Marab Duvashvili. Yeah, now I've taken a new approach uh, to my bantamweight predictions. And what I look at is I think, which one of these can finally put an end to Marab Duvashvili? <laughs> and whichever one has slightly higher hopes, I, I put invest all my faith in them. Yes. So, Ricky Simone, please, son, please get it done. Because I, I just don't see, I just don't see... Song having anything for for Marab, right? Uh, perhaps perhaps Simone can offer up a challenge. Although I have to say, to me, I lean toward that as being a bit of a freak finish. The one he got over Marab, I wouldn't I wouldn't favour him either. Uh, but still, his chance is greater, and therefore I have to favour him. But I really agree with you, Joe. I think this could be an unforeseen bump in the road for Ricky Simone. For sure. Hopefully, he's taken something away from that from that Faber loss, which obviously did set him back. What do you see, like, their trajectories now? Like, they're they're both at the fork in the road. And for me, I think Song's already down one road. Do you, what road do you think you see Simone going on down uh, in the next couple of years? Well, I'm excited about having that as an open question. Yeah. I'll, I'll say that to you, Joe. I agree completely. We We know... We know where Song is. Yeah, that's and it's, um, it's it's just very hard to see what could change to push yeah. him up into that real elite level. Yes, yeah, Song is at the stage where it's like fight night, pay per view main card banger. You know what I mean? Where I'm just like, if you want to get, let's get the crowd hyped. You know, it's not the co-main. It's the fight between you know just before the co-main. Get Song Yudong in there against Adrian Yanez. Oh, you're gonna get oh. you're gonna get some mitts flying. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Him versus Rob Font. You know that sort of like yes. Let's get let's get a bit of let's get some leather flying. Like that will be what you want Song Yudong for. Are we just gonna try and see, can we see Simone go to that level of the upper limits of this division of a Petter Yan of Corey Sandhagen? I mean, it's it's hard to say. I've, I've been pretty hot on uh, Simone recently, but um, you know, really looking at this fight, it has given me pause for thought in in you know recognizing okay, his wins are against Ray Borg, Brian Kelleher, forty uh, year old Rafael Asuncao. Um, but you need so, to, but you need to get those through those fights to get to the ones that give you the credibility. 
Do you know what I mean? Like uh, the Shaw win is definitely credible. A sunset it's, maybe a it's little certainly, bit. It's certainly credible, Joe. But um, all I'm saying is, you, I've had to check my expectations a little bit before the pod. I got to be honest with you. Coming in, I'm red hot for Ricky Simone, Ooh. and I, I I think he's going to freight train uh, Song Yadong because they they've got different different ceilings. Yeah, of course. Uh, but but you've you've given me pause for thought, and I think on this occasion. It's uh, Blue Moon. Ooh. You are right. There is merit in what you're saying. And I'm a bit worried for Ricky now. I hope I hope he can get through this because I'm excited for what he might do in this division. 